What's up, YouTube? It's Mr. Fett. <clears throat> Sorry for the long absence. Uh, life happens. <clears throat> what we have here <clears throat> is a tie, 2015. <clears throat> Sorry, that's up in my throat. <clears throat> Super Coyote. It is a, it's a pretty cool guitar. And uh, I just wanted to show you a little bit what it sounds like, um, the way it was, uh, I'm going to say the way it was meant to be played, right? Straight into an amp. Um, Taie, you know, why are you going to spend big money on guitars at all? Um, there are lots of great guitars out there for very little money. Um, and if you're going to go boutique, uh, you know, you got to be in it for the love of uh, the instrument. I just got to say that these don't, um, you can't flip these all day the way you can certain whatever's in vogue now, what, Lemon Burst 59 reissues. Um, they make thousands of them. Uh, you know, in a factory, um, these are not those guitars. These are uh, custom made by one guy. They have a very special finish, a hand rubbed oil finish. Day you get it, it isn't sticky. It just feels great, and it looks killer. Uh, shipwreck finished, sh yeah, shipwreck finish, dragon back plate, uh, Grover Imperials. Um, Taye likes these on these guitars better than the other kind of Grovers, the kidney beans. Um, you know, he's got a lot on his website, uh, why these are different, why he made them, you know, I didn't understand, uh, he, you know, my Coyote's incredible guitar, the Moon Knob was great. I didn't understand why you're going to screw with something that isn't broken. Um, I get it now, the guy's, the guy's a bright guy. Um, he's a player, if you haven't seen him play, um, watch some of the videos, man, he's a player. Uh, he likes to plug straight in and play his freaking guitar. Uh, and that comes across in how he builds these. Um, I think the biggest difference in these Taya guitars that I played is that they're full frequency. Um, a lot of times we, I, I, I'll, I'll speak for myself, I think I tend to char characterize certain types of guitars, Fender style guitars, Gibson style guitars, um, <clears throat> as having kind of a bright or uh, a little darker sounds. Certainly you can get, right? Everybody knows the best bursts were bright, right? Um, but generally, you know, as players, we tend to uh, have kind of preconceived notions of where these where these things sit at, where their um, their optimal frequencies are, uh, and you reach for certain guitars for certain kinds of sounds. Um, this is a really interesting animal. I I don't know. Uh, I tend to look at guitars holistically. What, it, what the whole package brings you, because feel, the feel of a guitar has a ton to do with how you're going to play it. Um, so, you know, does the wood matter? Does the metal matter? You know, in my mind, <laughs> it seems to me that the metal does matter, that um, it must be affecting uh, the kind of frequency response, the kind of vibration you're getting. Um, it just feels like, you know, when you're in the studio, uh, a lot of times you don't you don't want to you don't want to cut off any highs because you can't you can't boost highs that aren't there. Um, you can always take highs away. You can always you can always filter something out. Um, but adding back in uh, high end content usually you just get hiss. It's a great thing about starting with a guitar that has a lot of bite. I'm not saying piercing treble. I'm not saying um, I'm not saying it's harsh in any way. I, well, I hope you didn't think it was. You know, I, I tried to bang on it pretty good and let you hear what it sounds like. just has a lot of great presence and bite, but you can scale it back in a lot of different ways. I'm going straight in. This red cord today is plugged directly into this box, uh, AC4 hand wired. It's got a Celestion Blue in it, and I have it cranked up as loud as I thought I could go um, with my kids upstairs. Um, and uh, I've got it mic'd up with an SM57, that's it. 
and uh, it's a straight in. That's all. That's the only thing you heard. There's no reverb. There's, there's there was nothing else going on. Um, and so I hope it gave you a good flavor of what these guitars can do. Um, I'll go over real quick. I, I did another video on uh, on a Coyote. Um, so I go into a, a lot of detail there. But basically, when I'm here, this was the neck pickup. When I'm here, this was the bridge pickup. When I'm straight up in the middle, it's both of them. When I was here, it's that out of phase sound, Peter Green sound. You can look it up, but that's when I was getting those phasing effects uh, by swelling uh, the volume. Um, that was what was going on. The other cool thing is these are wired up so that you can you can bring one. When you have both pickups on, you can bring one all the way down um, and then bring the other one up as, as needed. It doesn't cut out uh, like traditional Gibson wiring does. Um, this is the tone control. This is the mojo control. You can tell guitars if you if you if you're looking for ties and you come across them and you want to know. Does this have the mood or mojo? Well, obviously on the Super Coyote it says, but on some of the models that don't have labels, um, there's a little click at the end that takes the capacitor out of the circuit, and that's how you know it's a mojo control. So I think what's happening there is actually when you get to that point. There's nothing going on. It's just the straight. It's just straight up. And then as you engage it, um, it takes off. Um, it, it dials back the pickups in a really cool musical way. I, I hope that came across. Um, uh, I don't. You know. I, I think all these guitars are, have been fantastic. Uh, you can take 2014s and you can get them retrofitted with the Mojo. Um, this guitar, like the other one that I played you before, the prototype, um, was made, you know, by Taie, um, set up by Taie by hand. Um, and I just think uh, he knows what he's doing. And um, you can read about why he uh, took everything back under his control. Um, I think he wanted to innovate, and I think a lot of times when you've got, um, you know, a company uh, doing your designs... Right, they're always trying to make more money, always trying to um, improve efficiency, and uh, I think sometimes that um, that can affect the quality of guitars. And I suspect that going forward, he didn't like what he was going to see with uh, um, how they were going to innovate. Um, and I think we all see that, right, with all our favorite um, instrument manufacturers, uh, all, all the big names. Um, we tend to think that the way that things were being done when they were done by hand, when the machining was different, blah, blah, blah. You know, and you see these videos of these factories, they say, oh, no, we've got this original machine, this is the one from the original way we used to do it, right? And you got these boutique winders who are uh, going back and finding old machines, old winding machines, and saying that's, you know, that's part of the mystique of it, right? Um, and so if you're into that stuff, you know, these are made in a small workshop um, in Austin, Texas. Uh, these 2015s anyway, um, and they're really cool guitars. Um, they're also pretty expensive, so I, I'm not going to say much more. I think you heard it. I hope you liked it. Um, I'm going to try to play it a few more different ways. I wanted to show you how I think it was kind of meant to, to, to be played into a um, straight into an amp, but um, I also want to say that <clears throat> I've had great success with this one. I've had it for a few months now. I, I didn't just make this video. I've been, I've been playing it for a while, and I've had great success uh, going through pedals. I just think it sounds fantastic. Um, going to drives, going into delays, and uh, I'll do more demos of it. Um, clean, uh, going into fenders, um, it, it, it shines. It's a, it, it shines in a lot of different environments, and it's definitely becoming my, it's become my go-to solid body. Um, I don't know that, uh, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I don't get the same sounds I get from, say, my 330, uh, hollow body with P90s. Um, but for almost everything else, or, you know, or like a 12-string, right? But a lot of other things that can cover just a ton of ground. Um, and if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I want a really nice guitar, I want one nice guitar, I don't need a big collection of guitars, I just want to play, I just want to learn how to play better, I just want to focus on my craft, um... If it speaks to you, man, if, if, you, if, you, dig the, if you dig the way it looks, um, you know, Kelly, uh, there's all different ties, right? There's all different models. Some don't have wood showing like this. Um, 
but this one has a kind of a black um, transparent burst. Um, I wanted it to be dark. Um, I was kind of inspired. It's kind of embarrassing. I was inspired by that. Uh, I, I saw that guitar Lenny Kravitz played at the uh, Super Bowl. I think it was like a. Uh, it, it had been a, a sunburst. It had been a, like a cherry sunburst Les Paul, and it got finished in black. And um, so you can kind of see the burst uh, beneath it. And that's what I was inspired by. I just think it's it's really cool with the silver and the black. Um, I just thought it was a cool aesthetic. Um, but you can do whatever you want. You know, it's it's a custom thing. Um, they do great work, uh, and they'll they'll work with you with, with what you want. Um, and you can go you can go through a dealer and and, and talk to the dealer and uh, tell them what you want and. Um, and it's a really cool, it's a, it's a, it's a really cool thing. So, uh, you know, give it a shot if you're into it. Tie 2015 Super Coyote. Peace.